Hello, I'm Sasha Swarovski, the University of Maryland men's soccer coach and the Division I men's chair of the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. And on behalf of the Division I men's soccer community, I'm pleased to present the following information for conference and member institution leadership regarding the progressive, holistic academic year season model that is designed to advance the college game and truly enhance the student athlete experience. The model has been shaped and refined over the past three years through the collaborative efforts of coaches, student athletes, campus and conference leaders, NCAA staff, and affiliated sports scientists, and is a concept that has been discussed for a few decades as soccer has emerged as a mainstream sport in the United States. As you can see, the purpose of this concept is to establish an academic year season structure for Division I soccer in keeping with the 21st century intercollegiate model and with consideration for student athlete health, safety, and time demands, and to balance personal, academic, and athletic priorities. The key pillars of the model are balance, performance, and fulfillment, as it is our strong belief that proper balance will lead to maximum academic and athletic performance and ultimately to the fulfillment of the student athlete experience. To achieve this worthy purpose, we've identified five goal areas that we want to accomplish with our model. From an academic standpoint, we wanted to increase class attendance and study time and positively affect academic concentration by creating more balance during the week and throughout the academic year. From an athletic standpoint, our goal was to manage the health safety of our players and improve performance through balanced training, competition, and a rest and recovery schedule. This is very important as the new model offers a suitable and suggested training to game pattern with a minimum of 72 hours required between competition. From a competition standpoint, by having one weekend game per week with an occasional midweek game of less than one per month over the academic year, we will allow the student athletes to properly train and develop and put themselves in the best position to perform at the highest level and really showcase the game in the way it should be presented. Another important goal was enhancement. We feel strongly that the student athlete and campus life experience will be enhanced via a weekend game schedule. There will be more people at the games, student athletes will have more time during the week to prepare and train for their games, but they'll also have more time for other campus activities, maybe attending other events or joining groups that they currently have a difficult time to, particularly in the fall semester. And the final goal area is championships. This is the pinnacle of a student athlete's career. And our goal was to improve the student athlete championship experience and the presentation of our sport by moving our NCAA tournament and college cup from the current late November, mid-December window to May, early June, when weather is more favorable and the venue options are more abundant and the overall experience is more fulfilling. And with consideration of our goals, I will now present an outline of the schedule for the academic year season model using the 2017-18 academic calendar as an example. As you'll notice, our fall pre-competition training will actually start 11 days later than we currently have. We will also have preseason go over two and a half weeks versus 12 days. During that time, we'll play two exhibition games. The fall competition will start on September 9th. That's three weeks later than we currently start. We will play 13 regular season games. 11 of those will be on weekends, which we feel will enhance the student athlete experience. Then, here's the beauty, we will have a transition break. We will stop playing the weekend prior to Thanksgiving and we will essentially take five weeks off. We will have minimal eight hour training weeks during that time period as allowed by NCAA rules. In the winter, we will start up again with an eight hour week training from mid-January to mid-February, which is similar to what we have right now. Then we will have our spring 18 hour week of training from February 20th to March 16th and we will play one exhibition during that time period. With consideration for weather, we will start a spring competition March 17th and play all the way through April 28th. This will be nine regular season games of which seven will be on weekends. The conference tournament then will be played over two weekends of April 29th through May 6th and we will then give our NCAA tournament a chance to flourish. We will start the weekend of May 10th and culminate on the weekend of June 9th in a single game championship, then we feel this is a calendar that makes a lot of sense. All right, since we're all visual people, let's take a look at the current model and the proposed model side by side to illuminate that this is not a revolutionary model, but really an evolutionary model 
So if you look at the top of the screen, as you all know, our current NCAA calendar, we start in early August, August 10th of this year. And throughout the year, we'll play our 25 games, of which 18 are regular season games in the fall traditional season with two exhibitions. And the non-traditional, we have five play dates. During the 20-hour care a week, the total number of hours our student athletes would use is about 377 hours. Now take a look at the bottom of your screen. You'll notice that we'll start, as we mentioned earlier, 11 days later of preseason, but we will play five fewer games in the traditional fall season with an 18-hour segment, and then in the spring season we will play 10 games with an 18-hour segment. Also, as highlighted by the bright yellow boxes on your screen, by moving the championships to bloom with the spring in the May to June window, we believe this will produce the type of student-athlete championship experience and presentation of the event in keeping with both conference and NCAA standards and that is in contrast to what has proved to be unfulfilling for student-athletes, a less than enthusiastic atmosphere for attending fans and unappealing to TV audiences in November-December time frame that we're currently in. So, as mentioned earlier, the full year concept for soccer has been discussed for decades and over the past three years has been finally refined into the model we're preparing for submission to the Division I Council that is currently weighing decisions with renewed commitment to the purpose of athletics in the realm of higher education. And with this commitment representing the recent NCAA time demand survey in which athletic administrators, faculty, coaches, and student athletes offered their opinions, the Division I soccer community took this exercise very seriously, and particularly as it relates to the changes that we're pursuing for our sport. So let's go through this NCAA time demand survey results as they relate to proposal. In the first slide here, you'll see that 80% of the soccer student athletes on our spring rosters and 92% of the coaches participated in this survey. That was the largest percentage of any team sport that took the survey. Now, the results of those surveys, let's take a look at the questions. The very first question was, do you support the reduction of competition by 10%? The coaches said no by 97% and the student athletes no by 90%. It's very clear. The student athletes don't want to play fewer games. The next question, do you support having the same number of competitions and lengthening the season? Coaches, 92% said yes, we want a longer season. Student athletes said 81% yes, we want a longer season. So they want to play more games, they want a longer season, and then finally the question was posed. Would you be supportive of a two-semester model? Here, the student athletes, 70% of them says, yes, we'd like to have more balance over two semesters. And the coaches consistently, once again, 90% of the coaches said, yes, we would like this proposal to go through. So as you can see, the survey data reinforces what we as college coaches have known through the years and what has continued to motivate our group in a pursuit of change. We also understand that with change comes challenge, and many challenges have been discussed with intercollegiate athletics leaders as have solutions for implementation. Regarding this discussion, we have prepared a detailed FAQ document that our coaches have at their disposal to share with you. You know, I began playing college soccer in 1981 when soccer was relatively unknown in the U.S. and since then have watched this game expand at an almost unimaginable rate, except for the Division I men's college game, which has unfortunately remained at about the same number of teams in the same format as when soccer was almost invisible in the landscape of U.S. sports. However, the days of soccer obscurity are long gone as it is now the second most popular youth sport in this country and now has 60 professional men's teams in three leagues with Major League Soccer being one of the most attractively growing leagues in the world. And with a demographic evolution in the U.S., there is no sport that compares to soccer with the potential to provide educational opportunity and cultural contributions to emerging populations. As stated in my introduction, the academic year season model has been designed for the 21st century with a simple motivation to provide the best student athlete experiences that combines fulfillment in academics, athletics, and personal life. And it is with this in mind that I, on the behalf of all of my Division I coaches, request that you consider supporting our efforts to see the implementation of this proposal. Thank you for viewing the presentation and for your consideration of our model.